Hey, Jonathan here at Topsaw. I used to work for a tree service in Northern Australia, and everybody on that tree service would play the didgeridoo, and they showed me how to play it. I brought this back from Australia, but I like to make my own. Um, the way a didgeridoo is made is it's hollowed out by termites and ants uh, and a young sapling tree, and then they cut it down, and you have a didge. Unfortunately, here in the U.S., I don't think I'm going to find any tree like that, so I'm going to go out find a small incense cedar tree, and then use the shop tools to make a didgeridoo. Looking for a perfect tree. And I think this incense cedar here is gonna be perfect for a didgeridoo. It's already dry. <laughs> Okay, this is a few days later. I uh, brought the two incense cedars home, maybe five, six inch diameter at the bottom, eight foot long, and maybe three inch diameter on top. I'm just pulling the bark off, going all the way down to the cambium. They're really dry, a lot drier than I thought. They're dry um, pretty much all the way through. Um, the only thing that's a little tricky with this draw knife here is the knots you know you're just going straight across the grain so just using my chainsaw a little bit to clean up those knots and then smooth it out with the draw knife so this is five to one speed um, and i'm just cleaning them up i screwed a piece of plywood to the bottom at the end and then pinched out in my saw horses and then the one saw horse you can't see is actually tied to the hitch of my truck so the whole thing's not moving around. Um, you know, it's incense cedar, so it's pretty soft wood, easy to work with, uh, enjoyable to work with, smells really nice. I'm trying to get a nice, clean, um, smooth outside to it. And then I'm gonna dice it down the middle and clean out the inside. So it, it's not supposed to be perfectly round. You know, it is a natural element. They are kind of, you know, aboriginalies made these they probably started making these thousands tens of thousands of years ago it's probably one of the first original instruments so it is a natural element um, so i am concerned that it's smooth and consistent and not big gouges taken out but i do want it to still look natural and hand carved so it's coming along pretty good here just about done A little more cleanup. I uh, unscrew those little blocks and rotate the logs in there, and then I'm able to get 360 degrees of the little log. So there's another angle. Beautiful spring day. One thing about five to one speed, it always looks like you're doing a lot of work. So they're they're pretty much cleaned up there. From there, I bring them to the high school. I was going to put them on the wood miser mill. But then I thought I probably actually just freehand it on a, our large bandsaw. So this is me cutting down the center of it on the bandsaw, kind of eyeballing it. I'm losing a little bit of vertical, but I figure the two sides are getting glued back together, so it really shouldn't matter too much. But we'll see. Um, now that it's most of the way through, I reverse sides and, and pull it the rest of the way through. And it actually cuts in half pretty well. Okay, they cut in half pretty well on the bandsaw. Now I brought them over to the 4x8 CNC router. It's a four scientific CNC router. It's a beautiful tool. Um, students really get a lot, I think, out of learning how to program CNCs. Um, but what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to fixture down the two halves. I'll only do one at a time. And then I'm going to I'm not going to program the CNC. I'm going to kind of freehand it. I'm going to use that three-quarter inch two-flute ball end mill, and I'll just use uh, the keys to drive it up and down the center of it. We'll see how well that works. My plan isn't to get it perfectly 
centered. Uh, I'm not too sure how the sound's gonna work. This is again at five speed, and you can see I'm just using the keypad, moving it in both X and Y kind of simultaneously through the taper of the log. Try not to take out too much at a time. And you know, the depth, I couldn't figure out really how I should do the depth if I should prop up the taper so it sits flat, but then I thought, actually I wanna run parallel to the taper so I fixtured it down. So the way I did it is I, I left the log eight foot long so there's a lot of excess on both ends and I screwed right through that to the wooden tabletop. And then when I'm all done with the whole didgeridoo and it's all glued, then I'm gonna cut off you know, six, eight inches off of both end, leaving it at, um, you know, maybe over six foot or so, and then I'll see how it sounds and go from there. The other thought I had was to seal the inside chamber with linseed oil just to help seal it up, but I'm worried that that might prevent it from gluing together well. So I think I'm gonna glue together first and then pour oil down the inside to help seal it. So you can see I'm just kind of eyeballing it there. Um, it is somewhat irregular. I think, to tell you the truth, the more irregular it is, possibly the more distinctive the sound is. I'm all done um, with the CNC. Now I'm just using, I think, a half inch gouge to clean up any sharp edges in there um, and sanding it as well. So here I am just gouging, using a gouge to clean it up any high points or low points, any sharp edges are getting taken out. Well, that certainly came out much better than I expected. It's actually surprisingly smooth and dry all the way through, even too dry. You know, there's a little bit like of a high ridge right here that I think I'll be able to clean out with the gouge. I do know that some of the cool sounds on a didge or a didgeridoo is kind of this natural termite pattern. I mean, that's kind of what you're playing. It's kind of a cool sine wave, right? You're creating vibrations with your lips and they're traveling through all of these natural paths and that's what gives you so sound. So with the CNC router, it kind of takes away from the natural beauty of it, but it is kind of cool at the same time. This is how I have it fixtured down. I glue the whole thing together and then I'll cut it straight across there then cut it straight across on the bottom and then maybe shape a little bit more. My problem with shaping it more on the outside when it's glued together is I won't be able to tell my wall thickness. So, all right, let me do the other one now. Okay, this is the other half. I'm just fixturing it down with screws. Um, this kind of has this bow in the middle I don't know how to fixture that down. It does get a cool resonance when the CNC hits it. But I'm doing this one pretty much the same way. Comes out pretty well. I'm um, just using the keypad to clean out the center of it. And that's about it for the other half. Okay, there are the two of them hollowed out. And you can see the tips where I fixtured them. I was gonna think of sealing them somehow, but I don't think I will. I think I'm just gonna glue them together while they're nice and dry. Well, first I'll go inside and sand and file the inside as smooth as I can get it. And then, and then I'm gonna try and glue it back together. I don't think I'm gonna sand that surface to glue it. I think that bond is actually, you know, there it is right there. I'm gonna use pipe clamps to put it together. So let me do a little sanding little chisel work, clean it all up nice. Certainly going to be the last time I see the inside. So I'll make sure I get everything just right before I glue it and clamp it. Change my thoughts on this. I think I will cut the ends off so that it's a U-shape. You know, so it's a U-shape and it might glue a little tighter. All right, 
I've been playing around with it a little bit. I think I got it pretty good. Cut the ends off and cleaned up the insides. I think I'm ready to glue where I clamped it. Okay, I spent quite a bit more time cleaning up the inside and the outside, uh, kind of off camera. I'm really excited to share this project with my students. I think my students are going to love this. Good introduction in all aspects of woodworking. So it's coming out pretty good. I think it's looking cool. I mean, I like it. There's the one end, the seam, the other end. I think I'm going to use like a mix together epoxy and feed it into all the cracks and holes. I do need to get some beeswax and make a mouth fit for it, but I think it's actually a pretty cool little didgeridoo. I'll keep working on it. Um, while I'm thinking of it though, if you like the video, hit like. I'd really like to hear your comments below. Hit subscribe, bell for notifications if you want to see more videos on all things wood. Well, here we are, sanded it a little bit more. This is just candle wax. Just kind of packing it around the mouthpiece to get a nice fit. Give it a little preheat. Here goes, you ready for the try? You ready? Give it its first try. So it's kind of like a Dodge Diesel. Well, there it is. First homemade digs. Probably a little bit of room for improvement still. But it, it works. Mm -hmm. 